Oh, well, hello, so today we want to cover print quality issues with your brother color laser printer. So we've done a full color page printout and this is the print quality that we are getting out of this brother color laser. It almost looks like the printer is printing in black and white when in actual fact the color coming out of the printer is simply because the cartridges have become affected by heat moisture Uh, well, generally just the local weather that you're experiencing which can affect your uh, laser toner cartridges. So, if we have a look here we can see we've got vertical banding. And what that means is that is reflected in the uh, toner cartridge. So. We know Mr. Trump is sort of uh, on the orange side of uh, normal colours, so that tells us that it's coming out in rather black and white, so it tells us that we have an issue with the red cartridge and the yellow cartridge, as you need magenta and yellow to make orange. So if we pull out our yellow cartridge and have a look, we can see that the toner being delivered on the toner delivery roller is not even and uniform right across the roller. If we compare that to the Magenta toner cartridge. We will see also that we have a complete missing bit of magenta toner over here and a completely uneven spread. So this happens due to uh, heat. Uh, the toner starts to clump inside the body of the cartridge here. Uh, high levels of humidity in the air while you're printing because especially here in Queensland where it gets we're subtropical as you're printing the machine is sucking in air through the fans here and another fan on the other side and you're, you're circulating uh, warm wet air through the printer. And of course, all that moisture eventually makes its way inside the toner cartridge. Um, so we're going to show you the quick method of fixing this issue today. And then I will move on to the more advanced method of fixing this cartridge. Um, if you're not satisfied with the quick, easy... Uh, ...fix for this problem. So, I'll just find an area to work and we'll move on to the next step. Uh, before I forget, um, the other reason your cartridge can be printing like this is simply that the cartridge is physically out of toner powder. There's no powder left inside the chamber. The gauge here on all brother machines in the uh, all brother laser machines is only an approximate of what's left inside the cartridge. The machine has no physical method of detecting how much toner is uh, left inside the chamber of the uh, cartridge. So, and if you're one of those people that's in the habit of resetting your toners and pretending that you've got a full cartridge and you've hit the reset button and this is jumped back to full 
but you haven't changed your cartridge, that's more than likely what's going to be your issue. So, uh, yeah, so we'll just move on and we'll just fix this cartridge and make it work a bit better. Alright, so if we look at the uh, printout we just did and we compare it to the toner delivery roller on this cartridge, you'll see that the pattern over here exactly matches the pattern that we're producing on our printouts. Now that applies to all colours, so you have to check all of your cartridges to make sure that they're all the same. Alright, so the quick method for fixing this cartridge is we take a piece of paper as such we tear off a small piece of paper about so big and we take this piece of paper and we fold it Now with this piece of paper nice and stiff folded over we get our cartridge and we stick the piece of paper between the metal doctor blade here and the rubber development roller here. So we stick it in and then what we need to do is we need it to drop down about uh, probably about three or four millimeters so what you do is you grab from the very edge up here and you slowly roll it backwards so we're rolling it backwards this way so we're rotating it clockwise at the same time as we are pushing this down and you will feel the piece of paper drop Okay, so we now got our piece of paper. It's dropped down between the rubber development roller and the metal cleaning blade. And now it's just simply a case of grabbing the paper and we're moving it upwards and downwards, so backwards and forth. And we just got to do that several times. And what that's doing is it's um, pushing out of the way any blockages that are behind in the chamber here that are stuck between the rubber development roller and the metal blade and the idea is to get those blockages it can be coagulated toner um, toner that's already started to fuse because the temperature of between this roller and the metal blade has gotten quite high during repeated high print counts um, or dirt that's been sucked in we're just pushing that to the edges as well so we now grab it and we move it up So it'll be a lot easier when you're doing it two-handed. You want to make sure you don't go past the the um, uh, the bushing area over here where no toner is supposed to be. And we just go backwards and forwards. Now, ideally, you do not want to touch the surface of this roller the development roller anywhere within the uh, development area it's best to touch it on the very edges but it's also a lot better if you take 
some needle nose pliers and we stick it in here and we turn this uh, clockwise. So I'll just finish going up and down on this and we'll come back and see what the quick results are before I kill this bird. Okay, so we have moved this piece of paper up and down several times. We now just pull it out. You will get a bit of a residue coming out on the edges. It's just simply a matter of turning the cartridge over, tipping it out onto a piece of paper, and just cleaning up any mess with a slightly damp chucks. Now, as we don't want to touch the surface of this roller ideally, we want to turn the cartridge just the same method that the printer turns the cartridge. We take our, we take our pliers or scissors, we stick them in the drive gears over here, and we turn the scissors or pliers clockwise. Okay, so as I turn these pliers, you'll notice as the roller is rotating in the direction that it's supposed to, you'll see that the toner will now start coming out more uniform. So now we have an even spread over here. We've got a bit of an issue where it hasn't pushed the junk to the side. So we will just grab another piece of paper and we will repeat the process over again. Hold it over. And then we will stick it down. Alright, so we've run that piece of paper up and down a few times. If we have a look at the spread over the roller, it's dramatically improved as to what it was before. We still have a bit of an error going on in here, where there is obviously something stuck behind uh, between the roller and the metal doctoring blade right here. Um, now we need to clean up the roller because because we've been moving the piece of paper upwards and downs uh, we've got over here in the no man's land where the uh, felt bushing is we've now introduced toner into the felt bushing we have to we have to deal with this otherwise it will promote leakage of the cartridge into the chamber of the printer so there we can see the error that's going on here, but we're not going to worry about that for the moment. We'll do that in the advanced cartridge uh, cleanup. So to deal with uh, this area over here where we've now got toner in the felt uh, bushings, we take a damp chucks, not wet, just damp, and we simply clean off the excess on both ends and what you can do if I had three hands or a tripod you simply grab your damp chucks you stick it on here you stick your pliers or scissors into the drive gear here and you rotate it All right, so we will put our scissors into the drive gear. We will rotate clockwise. We will take the chucks. You can see here it's all 
cupboard container, we stick our damp chucks right on the edge. And we rotate. Okay, now you do not want to get the damp chucks on the actual development area over here where I just have, that's a bad thing of course. We're aiming for cleaning this section here where there is to be no toner. So I'll now just turn it without the chucks. So I've introduced quite a lot of moisture into this area here, you don't want to do that, just get it on this section right here. Alright, so that's all nice and clean now, this will eventually come back normal as soon as the water evaporates out. You want to do the same on the opposite end over here. Let's see if we can not mess this one up this time. Stick it there like so. And we will rotate it. And there we are, left with the edge felt in here, all nice and clean. We've got a much better spread of toner across the development roller, except for up here where we introduced a bit of moisture. I'll just fix this now off camera and then we'll move on to the yellow cartridge which clearly has an issue as well. Alright, so that's the much greater improvement on that uh, toner spread across the roller there. We've cleaned off the edges. We still have a bit of an error here, but we'll move on to that in the more advanced part of the video. Um, so now we'll move on to the yellow and let's just see what that one looks like. Alright, so we've got the yellow cartridge out of the printer now and as you can see it's the same sort of story. The toner is not evenly spread on the roller. This cartridge may actually be empty as it sounds rather hollow, uh, but we'll give it a go at fixing it anyway. So, grab a piece of paper, tear off a piece of paper. Fold it over. And we will stick it down. We've got a piece of paper stuck between the roller and the blade and we will simply move it up and down. Pull the piece of paper out, tip off any excess, and now we will stick our pliers or our scissors into the end gear and we will turn it. And now you can see straight away we've got a much better spread of toner. Got a little bit of a run up here on this area where there's supposed to be nothing, but that's a million dollar 
heaps better improvement to what we started off with. So for most people that will be more than adequate to improve the print quality in the printer. This applies to all brother color laser printers. So I don't think we're going to do much more on that so I'll just run the damp chucks over here. Stick it in and rotate it clockwise. So let's clean that off, that looks pretty good in there now. This end surprisingly we don't have to do anything to because it's already nice and clean. So we'll chuck these cartridges back in the printer and we will see what the print quality looks like. Okay so we've got the cartridges back in the printer now. This is what we started off with. Let's see what comes out. Whoa! And as we can see, humongous difference. All the orange in all its glory. And that's the difference you get simply by pushing a folded over piece of paper into your cartridges to clean the junk out that's stuck behind. So this should be more than adequate for most people. Uh, the next step we will move on to the absolute professional clean which us printer technicians must do to make our customers go wow our printer looks really good. So we'll move on to the next step and we'll give the cartridges a full and proper clean. So if that's helped you out and that solved your problem you don't have to go any further in the video but if you want to do a full and proper job and just make it look as good as possible uh, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, for the next step, if you want to do the advanced repair, bear in mind this may actually make the print quality worse, depending on the type of cartridge that you're using. If you're using genuine brother cartridges, I do not recommend doing this next step, as it will be more than likely completely pointless. Um, depending on the aftermarket um, cartridge that you're using this may also may actually make the print quality worse so it's completely your choice if you move on to this next step so what you'll need to do the next step is you will need a dry chucks that is not wet you will need some mineral turpentine only mineral turpentine, do not use alcohol, do not use methylated spirits. The only thing that dissolves toner powder into a liquid form is mineral turpentine. So we will get our cartridge and we need to begin on this particular variety of cartridge. We have to take this cover off here. So we get our Phillips head screwdriver and we will need to take out this screw here and this screw here and we will pop this cover off. Okay, so we've got both screws out. It's just simply a case now of grabbing it and pulling the cover off, like so. You need to be careful with this gear as there is a spring 
here, down here. You do not want to lose these and get them out of whack. So put that aside. The next step we need to do is we need to take off this black plastic cover here. Now you need to be very careful because you can break this plastic cover. Now this plastic is conductive, it conducts electricity. It's not insulating like this plastic over here. So built into this plastic is a high amount of carbon. So this plastic section here can break very easily. You just need to get a screwdriver underneath here and between the actual plastic body here, this plastic body and this the, the carbon induced plastic over here and we need to separate okay so we now have that cover off you can see here why it's so easy to break it's very very thin and the problem is if you break this this bearing bushing over here that's part of the mold loses electrical contact with this part of the uh, body and you will not be getting any um, any bias voltage going from here over to here and then into the roller. It's very important that you do not break this piece uh, because of the high voltage that it carries for the image development. So uh, we're now going to take this roller out uh, this chamber will be full of toner so it's best to tip the cartridge up and tip it just tap it ever so slightly this way what we're doing is we're getting all the toner that's in the chamber to fall to the bottom the back of the cartridge so that when we lift this roller out you lift it by the end and then we have to slide it this way and out Okay, slide it out, pull it out, and you can see here the toner that's behind in the chamber. I'll just tap that backwards. You don't want to create a mess. Uh, Alright, so the next step is along the edge of the metal doctoring blade here. If your cartridge is really bad, right on the absolute lip, so where the blade bends over, right on this very edge right here, you can develop a hard crust of toner that has started to bake from the friction between this metal blade and the rotating roller. So as this roller rotates, if you're doing a huge amount of printing, you can actually start to develop quite a lot of heat. And that heat that you're producing can actually make the toner powder slightly set. So all you have to do is get your fingernail and scrape it along the edge. So this is where we've got that blockage over here. We were getting that stripe along here that the piece of paper couldn't get rid of. If we have a look, on this particular cartridge we can see that there's actually been a bit of moisture that's gotten into this section of the cartridge and it's formed a bit of a crust. And that's why we were getting the error on this cartridge so we just scraped that off with our fingernail. You don't want to use anything else. You do not want to use metal, anything that's sharp. The reason I use my fingernail is because it's soft but hard at the same time. And instead of the metal on the blade being scratched, it's your fingernail that ends up being scratched. Okay, so that's just gotten rid of any hard crust that's on there. 
The next step is we go down and we have a look at what's called the recovery blade. So down here there is this thin plastic sh blade and what this does is this retains the toner in the cartridge and it stops all the toner from pouring out of the cartridge. Now what can happen is right on the very lip of it, if we have a look there, we can see we've got this tiny little line. It's usually not too big of a deal because it's on the recovery side of things, but if you get too much of a line on that blade, you need to scrape that off as well with your fingernail. Just ever so gently. The idea is you're trying to make everything that touch, touches that development roller as smooth as possible. So I'll just pause, finish this and come back. All right, so that's now finished. We've got the line that was on the metal blade cleaned off. We've got the line of bake toner stuck to the recovery blade down here cleaned off. Next step is we need to clean up this roller. So we will take our damp chucks and we will simply wipe off all the toner that is bonded to the surface of the roller. Now once you've got all the loose toner off, you'll notice, depending on the type of cartridge you have, is you may have a thin film of baked on toner on the surface. So with this one here, you can see the edge where no toner is. And this is where we have a th very thin, micro-thin coating of toner that has simply smeared and bonded to the roller. What we do is we take our turpentine, we get our dry, clean chucks, stick some turpentine on it, and then it's simply a case of cleaning the surface of the roller with the turpentine. The turpentine will dissolve that thin plastic film of smeared on toner and will return the roller back to its completely clean state because what that what the smeared baked on toner does to this roller is it creates a layer of insulation and this this black rubber roller which also conducts electricity all right, so we just finished cleaning the surface of this roller up. You want to make sure it's as clean and as spotless as possible, as black as possible to smooth, remove any residue that's on there. Then you just want to put the roller aside and let it dry for a few minutes. You want all the turpentine that's on there to evaporate away. And then we will then move on to finish fixing the issue with the cartridge. All right, so now we've got the roller just drying over there, making sure nothing's touching it. Um, we've got to clean up these felts. These are the felts we were talking about in the first part of the video. This is what stops the toner from pouring out each end. Uh, you take your damp chucks, so it's got to have some moisture in it because the moisture is what's grabbing the toner powder and we simply rub it in there on the felt 
and we're re just removing any toner that's sitting on the surface of these felts over here. Like so, and we do the same on the other end. This, this end's pretty bad if we have a look at it. Just get a clean part of the rag each time. And we're just moving the toner out of the road and showing the felt underneath. The worst thing you could do is get any of the stamp chucks on this area of the uh, the uh, pullback roller that's in here. So that's a lot cleaner there now. And then I will just simply I've got to clean up this mess on here. So for that one, I will use a dry chucks. And then on the recovery blade down here, just the same with a dry chucks, not a wet. So there we got it, the top blade's clean, the recovery blade is clean, everything is clean. Alright, so this roller has had time to flash off any turpentine that's in it. We will simply grab it by the very edge, over here. You do not want to touch the area that's part of the development process. Grab it over there. And we will simply stick it back in to the cartridge. Now of course it is keyed over here so where that gear meets the shaft you'll have to rotate the roller in order to make the gear mate. And then we'll push that down. We will get our conductive bushing. Push that back on. And press that back on. I will take the cover. Stick that back on. Now the correct way around. And we'll clip that back into place. Okay, so that's back on. We will put the two screws back in. All right, so we've got our two screws back in over here. Now it's really important you do not touch the surface of this roller at all, now that it's spotlessly clean with turpentine. Uh, from now on, you only ever drive the cartridge through its gear that the uh, body of the printer turns in here. So now, As we turn it, put it in and we turn clockwise. So now as I turn this, we'll see On 
nice even coating of toner should start to appear if we have done done the job correctly so now we look at the surface of the roller and it's absolutely perfect like it's a brand new cartridge again uh, except for this bit here where we had rust so there's, there's been some water gotten in here for some reason and uh, so anyway the edges are perfectly clean you can see now that the felts are doing their job at sealing the ends properly we'll chuck this back in the printer I'll grab the yellow cartridge and we'll do this just what I've done here to the yellow cartridge uh, I'll do that off camera rather than bore you with 10 minutes of my life and then we'll see what the end result is so I'm just working on this yellow cartridge you can see here on the surface of this roller it's got quite a heavy, if I can focus it, it's got quite a heavy coating of smeared toner on the surface of the roller what that does is it insulates this roller rather than passing um, uh, the charge voltage, bias voltage, development voltage, all the voltages. So we'll just clean that off with turps now and put the cartridge back together. Alright, so we've got the yellow one done. We will just put our there and we will turn it. There we have a nice perfect seal going on right here the way we want it and we will just rotate it, rotate it several times just to smooth everything out So there we got it, the surface of the roller, all nice and uniform. Nice even toner spread results in nice even prints. So we'll now chuck that back in the cartridge and we'll see what the print quality looks like. Alright, so I've got our tests, we've started off looking like that. We've gone to this with the quick easy clean. Let's see what the end result is. <laughs> Atrocious. We need to run those cartridges a while just to let them balance out. And uh, all right, I'll just run that a few cycles and that should clear up the horizontal banding. Alright, so we've just cycled it a few times, just get everything moving, rotating, settling into its uh, development process. And let's just see what the printouts come out looking like. There we go. It just takes a while for the cartridges to settle in after you've cleaned them up. As you can see there, that is a huge improvement. So we've gone from this result, starting off with bad cartridges, to this result just using the paper. And straight after we clean the rollers with the cartridges unbalanced, they're coming out like this. And after we run the printer for a while, they've come back like that. So yeah, so that's how you improve the print quality on your brother printer. If your cartridges have become affected by um, 
heat, humidity, dust and dirt. Uh, if that's helped you out, uh, there is a tip link in the video below where you can feed my coffee addiction. Um, there's also the uh, YouTube thanks button, but if people aren't totally aware, that YouTube thanks button, once it goes through currency conversion, Google will actually take 40% of all the money that you tip me. Uh, in the description below the video, there is a PayPal me link where you can tip me through uh, the PayPal me link. Um, where I end up getting 100% of all the money that you tip me. Um, uh, if you haven't already done yet, you can subscribe to the channel. Uh, I simply just post videos about fixing common printer problems, mainly in brother printers, because they are the easiest and generally the most reliable of all the manufacturers. Uh, printers and um, I post the occasional music video of music I like and that's basically what the channel's about so um, if this has helped you out uh, yeah just subscribe give it a thumbs up if you like I'm not too fussed I make my living elsewhere YouTube isn't my main thing um, but it's certainly a good additive that seems to be helping everyone out, so... Yeah, that's enough of the orange man. <laughs> um, hope that improved your life a little bit. Thanks. Thanks for watching.